For more than a decade before the Mai Tai became popular, Trader Vic's Fog Cutter was one of his most well-known drinks, probably only second to the Scorpion. The Fog Cutter was most likely made in the late 1930s, with the first mention that I've seen of it in 1939, along with a few other drinks that were inspired by Don the Beachcomber like the Zombie, Shark's Tooth, and Skull and Bones. Trader Vic's didn't start out as Trader Vic's, but as Hinky Dinks, a far cry from the eventual Polynesian palace that Trader Vic's would become. Hinky Dinks was a small local beer tavern where you could get free lunch and even some entertainment from Vic himself. A dice or card trick, or maybe he'd even stick an ice pick in his wooden leg for a laugh. Vic didn't have much experience with making tropical drinks, and it wasn't until he traveled to New Orleans, Cuba, and a stop in Hollywood where he learned and was inspired to make his own tropical and exotic cocktails. Well, in Cuba, he even learned to make a daiquiri from the one and only Constante. Trader Vic had said that there was no fanfare about the name change. One day it was Hinky Dink serving sandwiches and beer, and the next it was Trader Vic's, now serving Chinese food and tropical drinks. But he was still using the name Hinky Dinks in the late 1930s, as we can see with the opening of the Bamboo Room, an exclusive ladies' lounge for women and their escorts. And at least one of his famous drinks, the Banana Cow, was created in the Hinky Dinks days. So it's possible, though it can't be confirmed, that the Fog Cutter was created during the Hinky Dinks times. Regardless of when it was first served, the Fog Cutter was a Trader Vic's original, even though the name Fog Cutter had been used in cocktails before Trader Vic. In 1821, a Fog Cutter was mentioned in a Vermont newspaper listing different types of drinks. Jerry Thomas mentions an Alabama Fog Cutter in 1862, and then a drink of rum and tea is called a French Fog Cutter in the 1930s. There's also two more mentions around the same time from bars in Los Angeles for their Fog Cutters. Not to mention that the term fog cutter had been used throughout the 18 and 1900s. Fog cutter ships were needed to navigate the fog. Science experiments were done by spraying oil on top of a river to reduce fog. Brilliant idea. Then there's a the use of a fog cutter as a profession. Whether that was serious at the time or not, I do not know. So the connection of the name fog cutter to the Bay Area is just some wishful thinking and a coincidence, but the contents of the drink were all Vic. The ingredients of the Fog Cutter make it an odd drink to receive as much notoriety and fame as it did. The original Fog Cutter was made with two ounces of lemon juice, one ounce of orange juice, half an ounce of orgeat, half an ounce of gin, one ounce of brandy, two ounces of a light Puerto Rican rum, and a sweet sherry float. An unusual combination of ingredients and something that is obviously a Trader Vic drink. Vic's drinks are pretty easy to identify. He would mix more than just rum and would use orgeat many years before the Mai Tai, at a time when no other popular drink was using orgeat. While the fog cutter was popular in the 1930s, 40s, and beyond, its greatest legacy might be the glass it was served in. This is pre-tiki mugs, and technically not tiki, but this is one of the very first specialty ceramic mugs that went with a specific cocktail. There had been other generic ceramic mugs and skulls, but this one was different. Now, Vic would go on later to update the drink to the Samoan fog cutter, which would be two ounces of lemon juice, one ounce of orange juice, half an ounce of orchat, half an ounce of gin, half an ounce of brandy, one and a half ounces of light Puerto Rican rum, and a quarter ounce of a sweet sherry float. Still a little out there with two ounces of lemon juice and the sherry float. As for me right now, I am drinking the original Fog Cutter, and what do I think about it? Really, I don't see why people buy them. And that's not blasphemous to say, because those aren't even my words. They're Vic's words. Really? I don't see why people buy them. He would also refer to the drink as a sneaker and limit two per customer. It's not just me and Vic that don't care for the fog cutter. Most people don't like it. And there's probably no point for us to make another one right now either. So instead, let's make a modern interpretation of the fog cutter by Paul McGee. Paul McGee had been at Three Dots and a Dash in Chicago before opening Lost Lake and has provided many updates to some classic tiki cocktails and made even more of his own drinks. For the Fog Cutter, he replaced the orange juice with an orange curacao, and there's a lot of other small and some big tweaks to get this drink more in line and balanced. For this updated Fog Cutter, you'll need lemon juice, orgeat, amontillado sherry, Pierre Ferrand dry curacao, cognac, gin, and a rum agricole. You're gonna build this in a drink mixer tin with one ounce of lemon juice, three quarter ounces of orgeat, half an ounce of Amontillado Sherry, half an ounce of Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao, 
half an ounce of cognac, half an ounce of gin, and one ounce of a rum agricole. go, an updated bog cutter. All right, let's try it. First flavors you pick up are the Agricole, the Gin, and the Amontillado Sherry. There's a lot less juice in here. It's a lot less acidic because we're dropping that lemon juice from two ounces to one. The orange curacao's there in the background providing just a different orange flavor than using fresh orange juice. So you get a lot less of that like juicy quality you would get from two ounces of lemon and one ounce of orange juice. But it feels much more like a classic cocktail. Actually, it feels much more like an old Trader Vic cocktail. I, you know, the fog cutter, the Samoan fog cutter, they just, you know, it, it never worked for me. It, it never made a lot of sense, but this pulls it together a lot more. Just little bits of the grassiness from the agricole and you get that nutty character from the Amontillado Sherry. Yeah, now that they're side by side, they're they're not even close to the same. Just that extra ounce of lemon juice here just totally destroys it. And all the subtle flavors you might get from your gin and your cognac are just completely lost when you have that much lemon juice and orange juice in the drink. There you go, the updated Fog Cutter by Paul McGee. It is it's much better than the original Fog Cutter. Not that that's the biggest compliment in the world, but I love it because it's tropical and tiki drink history, probably as it should have been. And you got really what's the backbone of Trader Vic cocktails, a mixing of different spirits and the Orgeat. It just comes together so well in Paul McGee's version. And in the past, I would have just told you to just skip the Fog Cutter, but if you want to experience uh, a truly delicious Fog Cutter, then this is the one that you want to make. So that's it for this one. I'm Derek, this is Make and Drink. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like below. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to support this channel, you can check out the Patreon page for more. And otherwise, see you on the next one.